Hello and welcome to the Entrepreneurial Edge. I'm Samantha Loring. Now, the University of the People is the world's first tuition-free non-profit online academic institution dedicated to opening access to higher education. The man behind this institution has over 20 years of experience in the international education market. Our guest this week is education entrepreneur Shai Rashef, the founder and president of the University of the People. Welcome to you, Shai. It's great to have you here in South Africa. Of course, you are based in New New York. Let's talk about this uh, online university because uh, of course it is tuition free so that is really uh, the model that we want to talk about today but where did the idea for the university come from? Well I've been in education for over 20 years as you mentioned and I've noticed how education can change people's life. However I also experienced how in many cases it's inaccessible. I, f I opened the first online education, online university outside of the U.S. in Europe. Great success, people from all over the world, yet wishful thinking for most of the people, too expensive. I ended up selling this university and decided that I want to give back. But I wanted to do it in a way that will have an impact on the world. And for me, it was education. Because when you think about it, when you educate one person, you can change a life. When you educate many, you can change the world. So I looked around and realized that actually all the ingredients that make SIO education are available and for free. Open source technology, open educational resources, and volunteers. All I had to do is to put it together and create a university. So I did, and I created the University of the People. We're, you, of course, marrying the technology and education, we're going to get into more about how that brings down costs. Uh, but, you know, you have been widely recognized. If you look at the FOSS companies, Hedges Most Creative People in Business, that was one of the accolades there. And then the Huffington Post describes you as uh, the ultimate game changer in education. Uh, so that, of course, amongst uh, many other accolades, essentially, creativity, game changer, how do those words describe your approach to building this university? Well. I'm flattered by all these accolades, but to be, to be frank, everything is there. I mean, the internet, the best reason to invent the internet, I believe, was to spread the knowledge. All that, all that people had to do is to take everything and use the technology that is available to educate the world. I'm lucky that I'm the one to do that. I don't know about the accolades. I know that someone has had to do it, and I'm the one who decided to do it. Okay. So let's get into how the university works. Okay. And I think you can start off with describing how it's funded, because uh, as we keep mentioning, it's tuition free. Well, our operation is being funded by great foundations, such as the Gates Foundation, Hewlett Foundation, Co uh, Carnegie Corporation, and others. However, what is important to notice is that we are tuition free, but we are not free. We ask our students to pay for exams, $100 or 1,000 rand if it's in South Africa, around per exam, if they can. If they cannot, we offer them variety of scholarships. So as a university, every time a student takes an exam, we get $100, which financially will make us sustainable when we reach a enough number of students. Mm -hmm. So the university is a non-profit, but it has a financial model to make it uh, sustainable. The students, on their part, has to pay $100 per exam if they have. If not, we offer them scholarship to make sure that nobody is being excluded. So currently you've got 1,500 students. You've been in operation for four years. Firstly, tell us about where these students come from and then what the plan is to scale up. Okay. Our students are coming from 138 countries, literally for every corner of the, of the world. They are coming, most of them are people who didn't have previously any chance for higher education. So we are opening the gates of higher education for everyone who has high school diploma and proficiency of English. So, we, so these students are coming from all over the world, many of them from hardship. Uh, we have survivors of the genocide in Rwanda. We have people who, who survived the earthquake in Haiti and many others. We give them the opportunity for higher education. These are the students that we have. These are the students that we make sure that can get out with a, qualifi with a quality academic degree. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, one of the obviously challenges of distance learning and online education is the lack of personal interaction with classmates, with the teacher. Uh, do you think that's a hindrance? Well, it is for some, not for our students, and I don't believe that not for the, 
for the majority of the students in the world because when you think about our students, they are young. And when you look at the young generation, Facebook, that's their life. Mm -hmm. social, social networking is how they live. And what we do in a way is taking s the behavior of social networking and making a university out of it. Saying that, yes, some lack their personal interaction. But again, when you look at our students, what's the alternative that they have? Mm -hmm. We have a great alternative for those who have no other alternative. So they're doing very well. By the way, 95% of our students testify that they would recommend us as a good place to study. So I think we're doing decent job. You're in South Africa to launch a scholarship program. So tell us about that and of course that linking up with Microsoft in effect. Yeah, we are, we are very happy that Microsoft decided to team up with us and to offer 1,000 scholarships for the best African students. So what basically Microsoft is doing is selecting the best candidates in Africa, offering them full scholarship, uh, opening um, access to Microsoft certificate programs. While they're studying with us, they are being mentored by Microsoft employees, having internship with Microsoft and job opportunity upon graduations. Mm -hmm. uh, graduation. So actually, Microsoft is coming and telling and, and saying, we are now training the next generation leaders of Africa. Well, we expect at least 100 of these 1,000 students to come from, a, from a South Africa. And I'm here first to tell the students, here there is a great opportunity for you because there are tens of thousands of students in Africa that don't have place or money to attend higher education. The opportunity is there for you. So I'm here to recruit the students for Microsoft and beyond Microsoft. But I'm here also to tell business all over, all over Africa, come join Microsoft, offer your own scholarship, because the talent is in the continent. Mm -hmm. Let's find the people who deserve the chance and help them. Well, hopefully, uh, you know, of course, it does take off uh, here in Africa where we do need a better quality education. Uh, but let's talk about your views on the current education system globally. And of course, we have seen advances. You know, what you're offering here is certainly a step forward. I mean, I just think back to my tertiary education. You had these big classrooms with so many different people, different levels of intellect, different levels of drive, sometimes very dull uh, lecturers. Uh, so it was often more motivating to study at home very quickly through a textbook as opposed to going to university. I mean, what needs to change in the education system and of course specifically in tertiary education? Well, I think that first of all there is no reason for people to go to necessarily to listen to a professor if they can sit at home and see him on video. They save time, they can rewind what they haven't heard, so it can be much more effective. Second, online is a great complement to, to traditional studies, both in terms of, you know, when you can see online the best professor in the world. Why do you have to go to your university to see a professor, which is not necessarily as good? Second, you can be, it can be much more interactive. People tend to think that studying online is less interactive and that it's really easy. It's not. It's very hard. It's very interactive. You interact with students around the world. You know, in our case, every time a student takes a class, we, see, we put them together with 20 students, only 20 students, so we make sure they have personalized attention, but 20 students from 20 different countries. Every time they take a course, 20 new countries. You open their mind. They develop shifting attitudes. So we develop new kind of students which are motivated, have self-motivation, otherwise they wouldn't be able to make it. Yeah. Yeah. What's it going to take to get uh, online distance education more mainstream in the education system? Are we moving in that direction? Are we moving in that direction quickly enough? I think we do and it's not by choice because no government can afford building enough universities to accommodate the need. No government in the world can cope with the, with the rising cost of higher education. So the only way to cope with the demand is by, is by online. So are you seeing governments buy into this type of model? I believe that uh, our success will force government to look at it and say, wow, that's a great opportunity. We should embrace it. Yes, I do believe so. Mm -hmm. So you've got 1,500 students right now. I mean, how big do you want this university to get? What's the long-term vision and what long-term target, essentially? Well, it's a good question. UNESCO stated that in 2025, assuming the growth of the world population will stay the same, assuming that the opening of new universities will stay the same, 100 million students will be deprived from higher education. 
So we are here to build a model to show both universities and governments that there is a way to serve these people. Mm -hmm. So now back to your question, we are there to serve these people. So if others, other universities, other governments will serve them, great. There is no need for us. If they want, we will dare to grow and grow and grow and grow until every single person on earth will get their chance. Yeah. So, so looking at what you have been able to achieve in the, in the many years that you've been in the educational space and, of course, been uh, very much an entrepreneur in it, what does it take to become an education entrepreneur? Would you recommend it to those listening at home and thinking, this sounds interesting to me, of course, uh, you know, there's one aspect of it, giving back to society. I mean, what does it take? What skills are needed? Uh, what would you recommend they do? Wow, that's a good one. I'm not sure <laughs> that I know the answer. I think that uh, you need a drive. I don't think that there is a big difference between education and, and being an entrepreneur of education or any other field. The difference is education does good to the world. So you feel very, fl very, very good with what you're doing. So I think that you need a drive. I think that you need to be open-minded, look at what needs to, to happen, and, and do that. And the secret, never giving up. Mm -hmm. So that's what they do with education. I do it as a non-profit um, enterprise, but I don't think that it makes a difference. I think that it's important for me to be in this in non-profit uh, enterprise, but it can be in any kind of uh, business and definitely in education. And, and in terms of the acceptance of these degrees that you offer uh, for potential employers, what type of uh, you know acceptance will they have in the workforce? I mean, is that a challenge essentially? Because we know when it comes to education, especially tertiary education, it's the label that everyone looks for. Well, first of all, we right now have an agreement with uh, Microsoft is actually saying that they are going to hire our edu uh, graduates, and the same goes with HP. But when you look at our university, you look at who is behind the university. And we have people from uh, Oxford, uh, Harvard, NYU, Yale, MIT. What lecturers from all these universities? Well, our president council are from these universities, our top academic leadership, our lecturers, our course developers. So you look at them and you know our quality. And by the way, I invite everyone to go to our website and look for themselves and see if it's good enough for them. And I guess that that's the label they're looking for. Mm -hmm. yeah. Shai, it's been an absolute pleasure. Of course, we wish we had more time with you to unpack uh, what's taking place in the educational sector globally. But of course, we wish you all the success and a very noble mission that you're on. Thanks for your time today. That's, of course, a wrap uh, for this episode. Be, join, uh, be sure to join us next week, same time, same place. Until then, it's goodbye. <laughs>